In this video, we'll use Base Network, which is Coinbase's crypto network. I'll show you how to get assets into a wallet on the Base Network and then how to use applications on here as well. Timestamps for all of that will be in the description. The first thing we'll need to use the Base Network is a crypto wallet. If you don't have one yet, there are many good ones out there like Coinbase's wallet, Metamask, Trust Wallet, Rabi, and many others. So I'll leave video guides for them below if you haven't got one. It goes through setting them up, how to get your wallet address and everything like that. It takes about five minutes. And then once you have a wallet, you can actually receive coins into that. Uh, so I'll show you that in a second. I'll show you with Metamask and also with Coinbase wallet on a phone as well. doesn't matter which wallet that you set up. In fact, once you have a wallet set up, you can use any of these clients. You can just reload your wallet in all of these and use it across your phone or your computer or anything else. So if you haven't got a, a Metamask or a Coinbase wallet or anything else, watch the videos down in the description and you can get set up with one within a few minutes. Depending on the wallet that you have, you may need to manually add the base network in to be able to use it and see any coins that you send to yourself. So in Metamask, if you do have an account up in the top left, you'll see a list of networks and you may not have a lot of these added. So what you can do is add it in. In fact, if you go to add network, it should take you through and this list here should give you the base network. It should say base and you can just add this in. What that does is add this to your list and then you can just click this and you are now on the base network. You'll see that your Ethereum address is exactly the same across all of these different networks. It doesn't change. So you have the same address, but it matters where you're sending the coins from. So you need to choose the correct network where you want the coins. So when we're sending coins into our wallet on the base main net, we need to make sure that we're withdrawing wherever we're sending it from on the base chain. So we need to use exchanges that send in coins using the base mainnet. Now, of course, Coinbase allow us to do this, but many other top exchanges allow this as well, like Binance and OKX. So you can choose the base mainnet in order to send coins for yourself. So on Metamask, you can just set that up here by adding it in manually. And if you are using a wallet like Coinbase wallet or Trust wallet, you don't add networks. But what you do is you can see these coins right here. Now on phones, they're actually going to give you a list of all of the assets that you have. And beside it, you can see there's a little logo on the BNB. So this is BNB coin and the logo is that of the BNB chain. So I know that my asset, which is BNB, is on the BNB chain because it has that logo. You can see here that Ethereum is on the Ethereum mainnet because there's no logo. And if I send Ethereum to myself on the base network, which is a different network, then it'll show me having Ethereum and there'll be a logo, the base logo that shows me that I have Ethereum on the base network. Same address, but it is a different network. So you have to make sure you're sending it across the base network to get it on that network. Now that we have our wallet set up, we need to go ahead and buy some ETH and then send it to our wallet address. Because base is a layer two on top of Ethereum, it uses ETH to pay for transaction fees. So every time we send a coin or trade or do anything, we have to pay a small fee that will be paid in ETH. So we need to get that in our wallet first. So if your wallet is set up and you're on the base mainnet right here, come and copy your wallet address in Metamask, which is this one. If you're using a different wallet, your address will be there. You can copy that. Then go over to your centralized exchange, buy some ETH and send it out to your wallet. If you don't know how to use Coinbase or Binance or the others, I'll leave video guides for them as well. I'll leave links if you are new on those uh, platforms as well. They often give deposit bonuses, so you can check the details via those links and you can buy Ethereum everywhere. So you can see I've got some Ethereum here in my uh, Coinbase account, so I need to send that out. So I'm gonna go to send and receive and send. I'm gonna send this token, which is the Ethereum token. And really important here it says, um, select the network and the recipient. So I'll click on that. Now, this is uh, really important to choose the network that you wanna use because your address is the same across all of these networks, but obviously you need to use the network that you want the coins on. If you send on the Ethereum, which is default, that will go to the Ethereum layer one network, which isn't the base network. If you use Arbitrum, it's a completely different network, you won't have it on the base network. So you need to tell the exchange I want the Ethereum that I've got on the base network and it's gonna send it over that network so it comes into your account. So I'm gonna click base 
And then from here, I'm just gonna say, yes, it's supported because I know that MetaMask support this. You've seen that, so I'm gonna press yes. And it says, put in your wallet address here. So I'm just gonna paste in my wallet address and click that. And then from here, it says, you know, preview the send and send it out, right? So I'm gonna send this amount of money. I'm gonna preview that send. And if everything is okay, uh, you can see here the network fee is 22 cents. So a lot cheaper than Ethereum. Press send now. They'll send that ETH over the base network into the wallet address that you've given. You don't have to use the Coinbase exchange to buy your ETH. As long as any exchange that you're using supports you sending that ETH over the base network, then you can use that. So I'll show you an example here of Binance. I have some Ethereum here. I'm gonna paste in my wallet address, which I know supports the base network. And then right here, I'm gonna choose the network that I send it on. Again, if I'm using Ethereum, that's the base layer. So it's gonna to go to that network. But if I scroll down, you should see that Binance actually support base as well. So if I click this, I know that uh, Binance are gonna be sending that Ethereum over the base network and it's gonna to go to this address. So you don't need to use Coinbase, it is more expensive, so other exchanges are a bit cheaper. But as long as you have the address here and you can send over that network, it's gonna to go to the right place. If you have ETH tokens on the Ethereum mainnet already, then you may want to bridge them over to the base network. So there's two ways of doing this. The first one is just send the ETH back into your exchange and then from your exchange, withdraw to the same wallet but on the base network. The other way is to use the bridge. You can check at the time that you're watching this what the gas fees are because it may be cheaper to send to an exchange and then withdraw over base rather than pay the bridge fee. You're gonna to have to check. But in any case, come to base.org. I'll link everything below. Come to bridge. And then from here, you can connect your wallet if you have one. So we wanna deposit from the Ethereum network to our uh, base account. So connect your wallet in the top right. I'll just choose MetaMask. It's gonna ask me to connect and which account I wanna connect. So I'll press next and connect. And then from here, uh, we need to switch the network back to the Ethereum mainnet. That's where your coins are and that's where you need to pay the transaction fees. So if you have any assets here, what you can do is choose an amount that you want to uh, bridge from the ETH mainnet and that's gonna be sent to your base account. So from here, you should see an amount of ETH. You can actually bridge other tokens as well. So if you have any of these, you can bridge them over. Uh, and then what you can do is choose what you want to uh, bridge over and then press deposit ETH. So that's gonna be an Ethereum mainnet transaction. So it's gonna be you know, pretty expensive probably to do that, but it takes your ETH from Ethereum mainnet over to base. And then from there, you can have the ETH on the base network and you can uh, do everything that you want. Now I've received that Ethereum into my wallet on the base network. You can see I've got a balance right here. And so we'll go ahead and use some applications. So on DeFi Llama, if you go to base network, this will show you uh, all of the popular dApps and the number one and two are DEXs. So we'll go ahead and swap one token for another and I'll show you Uniswap as it's um, the larger exchange uh, across most networks. So we can connect our wallet. So we're gonna connect in the top right hand corner, MetaMask wallet, but you can use any of these. They're, they're all good, MetaMask, and it's connected. Just make sure that you're on the base chain so it knows to um, you know, read your wallet on this chain because that's what you wanna use. From here, it uh, sees that I have a balance of ETH in my wallet now. So what we can do is swap that to another token. I've only got ETH, so I can't, you know, I obviously need to use this as value and to use it to pay for gas as well. So I'm gonna swap an amount like that. And I'm gonna select a token that I wanna swap into. So I'll just swap into a stable coin. USDC is kind of the main uh, stable coin on base because Coinbase are basically invested in Circle, which uh, issued USDC. So this coin is the most used stable on base and not USDT, which is the most used stable on other chains. So we can see that I'm swapping some ETH into an amount of USDC here. So let's go, th go through with that transaction. You'll see down here that uh, the network cost is around 60 cents. So way cheaper than Ethereum, not the cheapest of chains, to be honest. There are many other ones that are cheaper than this, but in any case, we'll go ahead and swap. So we can preview that swap and we'll have to just confirm these assets. So confirm swap, and then it's just gonna confirm this in my wallet. You can see the estimated fee is actually around 85 cents. Um, so that's fine, we'll press confirm, and that should go through uh, fairly successfully. So that's pretty quick. That's actually uh, been swapped already. So what you should see now, if you click your wallet, 
is that you should have uh, on the base network some coins. So you can see that here, I have USD coin and the icon in the bottom right shows me that I've got it on the base network. In fact, you can see that here as well. So the ETH coin, I've actually uh, you know lost 0 0.001 ETH because I swapped that into this balance of USDC. So now I have uh, two of these assets in my wallet. If you're using a wallet like Trust Wallet, Coinbase Wallet, Rabi, they're gonna automatically find the coins that you have and display them. But if they don't, you can add these manually as well. So I'll show you how to do that. What we can do is go to a coin registry like CoinGecko, come down to the coin that you know that you have and you may not see it in your wallet. So for me, it's USDC. So I'll click this and then we can get the token address of the coin. So under info, uh, go to the contract, click the drop down, and you need to find the contract on the chain that you wanna use. So I know that I'm using the base network. So this is the contract on the base network. So I'm gonna copy this. And I know that I've got USDC. I'm gonna go back to my wallet. And from here, I'm gonna press import tokens. If you're in a different wallet, it may be import or add tokens. So you can do it manually, click import, then paste the token address. And it's already uh, found it, this is USDC. So I'm gonna press next and import. And now you can see it and I have that balance there. So you should be able to do that for all the tokens that you have. Because BASE is a crypto network, anyone can create any type of token on here, including scams. So what you can do is go to another type of token registry like Gecko Terminal and then see what is trading. So this is like a DEX screener. It's gonna give you all of the trading volumes and all of the coins that you might wanna trade. So here, if you go to BASE, and then if we click on show trends, this shows the you know trending coins in terms of trading volume and top gainers. A lot of these are gonna be whatever, right? Scams or meme coins or whatever, right? So trade them at your own risk. But if we go to top volume, what it's gonna do is give you some of the highest traded pools. So for example, USD coin against ETH. So we know that this pool, it trades $21 million in volume. That's a normal pool that we can trade, right? So we're swapping ETH for a stable coin. So if you click on this, it's gonna give you the info, all, the, all of the trades that are happening. So you can see that here, and obviously the price of them uh, over time. If you scroll down though, you can see all of the info here. So they're gonna give you like a score, right? Transactions and who holds this. So it's 85 out of 100. So you know, it's, it's more trusted in terms of are there any weird things? Are there taxes when you buy and sell? They're obviously big red flags that you trade, right? Because they're obviously doing something weird on the back end. But this is literally just ETH versus USDC. It's obviously the real pool. And we can check the token addresses to make sure they're the real tokens and not scams or anything like that. So that's good to just double check if you are looking to trade anything, you know, what it actually is that you're trading. Now that we have a stable coin in our wallet, we can go ahead and lend that out on a lending market. So I'll show you doing this on Aave, although there are others, Compound is pretty popular on Base as well. So they all work in the same way. So we're gonna connect our wallet and browser wallet, and we should have our wallet uh, connected and it reads our tokens. So you can see we have some of that USDC we swapped and it shows my balance and it shows the APY that I'll be getting if I lend it out, which is 10%. So if we go to markets, you'll see that uh, all of these markets are supported on this lending protocol. So the market that we need to use is base. All of these are different, different chains, different markets. If we go to Ethereum, you should see that the market size is 10 billion. And if we lend out uh, USD coin on Ethereum mainnet, we'll be getting 8%. And the market size is you know just under a billion, right? 900 million. If we go to base, it's a completely different market. The total market size is much smaller and the amount of the USDC market is much smaller as well. It doesn't really matter for us if we're you know, just retail investors, just putting some money in here. The supply APY is actually a little bit higher at 10.5%. Um, so we can go ahead and use this and gas fees are gonna be a lot cheaper. So if we click on our dashboard, you can see that uh, the, the uh, protocol knows that I've got some USDC and it tells me the APY. So I'm gonna supply this, I'm gonna click max, and then I'm gonna to have to approve the USDC, so that's no problem. So I'll just approve that with my wallet. I think I have to sign a transaction here. So this should be pretty uh, pretty cheap. Now you can see this spending cap on MetaMask and other wallets may um, put this out for you. So what you want to do is approve a cap um, that the protocol can actually manipulate in your wallet. 
Now this is a safety feature because if the um, protocol gets hacked or the front end gets hacked, you may sign ban, uh, bad contracts. You've seen that in the news maybe before where you know you sign a wallet drainer. So a front end gets hacked or something and you sign a wallet drainer and you've given the application unlimited access to all of your coins. You sign the wallet drainer, all your coins are gone. So this is kind of a safety feature to say per transaction that I sign, put a limit on what you can manipulate in my wallet. So you can press max and this is the amount that the app actually wants to transact right now. Or you can say, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of fine to do like 500 per transaction. So if you do sign a kind of a scam uh, signer, then it's only gonna be able to ma manipulate $500 a time. So you can choose, you know, whatever amount. Um, so let's just put that in. We're gonna press next and we have to pay a fee here. So that's fine, I'll press approve. And that's gonna sign the transaction and now I can supply it into the network. So I'll press supply. And this is actually another transaction. Um, so we can see that here, another kind of 40 cents. Base is definitely not the cheapest of layer twos for sure. Although, you know, things are gonna get cheaper uh, as time goes on, but that should supply. And then what you'll see after that's done is that we have a supply up here that is actually earning uh, the yield, whatever that may be at the current time. So that's done. And what we actually get now is a different token because our USDC has actually been sent to the platform to lend out to other people. And so we don't have our USDC anymore. However, of course, that is still ours. We're lending it out. So how do we get that back? Well, we show the protocol what we have via a receipt token. So when you loan someone money, you need the contract or you need the receipt for what you've done. So the way that Aave do this is give you A tokens. So this is like a receipt of what you've put into the uh, platform. So it says, do you want to add that A token? You can go ahead and do that. So if you just click add to wallet, it's going to add that to your wallet. Um, so that's fine. I can uh, add this. You see the balance. So what this is, is you've supplied this into the exchange. This is your receipt and you can swap this back in for your actual money um, if you want to get it out. So I'm going to add that token. Now this will accrue interest um, every second of the day uh, at whatever the APY is. Now Aave is a variable rate, so it may go up, it may go down, but you should be accruing interest on this dollars that you've supplied right here. So you've supplied that into the network and if you want to withdraw it, just press withdraw and you choose the amount that you want to withdraw and it's going to give you that and you just go through press withdraw USDC. You'll pay another gas fee, but you get that coin back into your wallet. I'll leave the exchange bonus links and other helpful videos down in the description below. I'm James, it's Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.